I love the 90s. See, the 90s, man, before the internet was big, fans had to call a 1-800 or 1-900 number to talk or contact their favorite celebrities. And at once upon a time in that era, everybody had a hotline. I think the biggest might have been Hulk Hogan and all the wrestlers. Man, look, I remember Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff had a fan hotline. Corey Feldman and Corey Haim had one. I even seen Freddy Krueger had a hotline. Everybody had a hotline. Look, Grandpa, <laughs> Grandpa from the show The Monsters had one. Wow. But that was their hustle back then for celebrities to get the money when their career slowed down. But see, the ones who really made money from the 1-900 number hotlines were the psychics. And then you started seeing famous celebrities becoming fortune tellers and psychic readers just to make some money. You know, of course you had legendary singer Dionne Warwick. I know y'all remember her. She was one of the biggest ones with the Psychic Friends Network. You had Isaac from the show The Love Boat was on there with her. Esther Rowe from Good Times was also on that network with her. Gary Coleman. Um, Latoya Jackson got into it. Bridget Nielsen from the movie uh, Rocky IV. And she was in Conan. She had got into it. Tori Spelling and many more. Now, don't get me wrong now. Don't get me wrong. Now, a lot of psychics have solved a lot of cases that were unsolved that even police couldn't figure out. Some family members would hire psychics to find their loved ones and things like that. But some psychics have been exposed for telling lies like Sylvia Brown, who used to be on the Montel Williams show all the time. I remember when she told some parents, man, their child was dead and come to find out the child was alive. That's a shame, man. I'm going to get into her story, too, on another episode because she got called out a couple times. But I know, I know for a fact y'all remember Miss Cleo. Miss Cleo was off the chain. <laughs> Call me now. Miss Cleo, man. She had that Jamaican accent. Look, Miss Cleo used to tell women that their husbands was cheating or vice versa or tell the husband that the kid wasn't his. Crazy stuff, man. Miss Cleo was. Let me tell you. Look, let's get right into it. Man. I ain't going to waste no time. Let's get right into her story, right? Now, Miss Cleo real name is Yuri Dell Harris. And she was born August 12th. 1962 in Los Angeles, California. California. I know a lot of people thought she was from the Caribbean. Now, growing up, she was one of 10 siblings and her parents were very successful Americans. Her father, who was from Texas, and her mother was from California. They put her in an all-girls boarding school. Now, one article tried to say her parents were drug dealers, but Miss Cleo said that wasn't true, and she was very upset with the People magazine for putting that out there. But anyway, now, when she got to high school, most people just remember her just always taking pictures and working on the school yearbook. But also in high school, that's when she discovered she was a lesbian and dated her first girlfriend. Miss Cleo said in an interview that her girlfriend had blonde hair and blue eyes and was on the swim team and she thought she was the best thing since sliced bread. Hmm. But see, by the time they were seniors in high school, her and her girlfriend, right, her girlfriend's father found out and broke them up. After that, around the age of 19, to hide her sexuality, Miss Cleo ended up marrying a gay guy so that everybody would just leave them alone. And they ended up having two daughters together, but they divorced a couple years later. And then they got back together again and remarried. But he ended up dying from AIDS later on in life. Now, 
after that relationship, that's when she decided to move to Seattle, Washington to pursue theater, starting up her own production company. Now in Seattle, to get money, she started doing all types of fraudulent stuff. And she had a whole bunch of names she would go by, like Reed Paris, Yuri Cleo Millie, and many more, claiming she was a theater arts major at the University of Southern California, which was a total lie. But see, with those lies right, she was able to get hired by the Langston Hughes nonprofit advisory council. And look, they gave her a budget to pay the cast and crew members for her three stage plays she had created. Now, one of those plays she created was called For Women Only, in which she plays a turban wearing Jamaican lady named Miss Cleo, who sold trinkets at a market. That's where the name and the Jamaican accent come from. And she would practice that accent on and off camera in which people around her at the time just thought was weird. Why was she doing that? But see, now, once that play came out, she never paid the cast members and the crew. And they started complaining about not being paid. That's when she told them that she had bone cancer and sickle cell claiming her high priced medical bills was the reason she couldn't pay them. So this is what she did. Miss Cleo, right? She wrote each actor and crew member like an IOU letter telling them she would pay them back. But check this, right? Now, after lying to them about that, she ended up skipping town and went to Florida. Now, the Langston Hughes Center where she was doing her plays were going to press charges on her, but they changed their mind and just decided that the legal action would cost far more than the money, so they just let it go. They was just more upset that the little kids in her plays didn't get paid. But according to Miss Cleo, she said she left Seattle because of her second relationship with a woman that became abusive towards her and her younger daughter. She said that woman had some alcohol issues. Now in Florida, she needed a job and there were a lot of rumors that claim she was a cast member on the American crime drama television series, Miami Vice. But several people associated with the show and Miami Vice fan sites, they say they was unable to verify whether she acted in the series. But anyway, now in Florida, she took a job as a telemarketer working as a tarot reading psychic after seeing an ad in the newspaper. And she did that for about three to four years, right? And she was so good at what she was doing with that Jamaican accent that the owners of the Psychic Readers Network company took notice. And one day, while she was working a special event at the mall doing her tarot reading, when all of a sudden she was approached by a production assistant from Access Resource Services and Psychic Readers Network. And they was impressed. They wanted her to do a commercial and be the spokesperson for the company. And of course she agreed because she needed the money, which was gonna be $1,700 for doing a commercial for them. Because see, look, the Psychic Readers Network first spokesperson was Philip Michael Thomas, who y'all probably know from the 80s hit show Miami Vice. The crazy part is, look, they fired Philip Michael Thomas and hired Miss Cleo, and he sued them for breach of contract. And he was awarded a judgment of $1.5 million plus $780,000 in interest. Wow. Now, that psychic network business, right? It was started by a guy named Stephen Fetter who was a wealthy Florida businessman and his cousin, Peter Stoles. And they've been in the business running other telephone psychic operations since 1993. They came from Jersey, they've been doing this game. Now, at first, what they did was recruit qualified psychics. But when it popped off and got popular and the demand was heavy, that's when they just hired anybody, even with no psychic experience at all. Basically, 
they hired phone actors as subcontractors to keep callers on the line for at least 15 minutes because see the first three minutes was free but after that it turns into 4.99 a minute for a psychic reading and by the time you're done with the call your phone bill would be over 300 dollars or more wow i'm getting that money man and look the owners of the company would encourage them to keep the callers online as long as possible as well as leaving them on hold for a long time see they put they put you on hold for that first three minutes that's supposed to be free but you ain't even know now the psychic readers network will only pay their employees like 14 cents a minute but they paid miss cleo 24 cents a minute plus it made her the face of the company after she recorded a commercial for them in her character as cleo they really thought her acting was phenomenal the company wanted the public to believe that she was fresh off the island of jamaica and you know what she blew up she blew up once she started doing those commercials everybody wanted to talk to her over six million people called in to talk to her she had the company bringing in over 24 million dollars a month wow look over a two to three year period that hotline made more than one billion dollars that's crazy and but she she only made about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars herself which was a ripoff to me she should have been making millions just like the company because she was the star and the face of the company she was the brand look she was on miss cleo was on the jenny jones show and everything she was big man she was touring all around the world she also had a book she was selling called keeping it real a practical guide for spiritual living and everything was just going good until a young court TV reporter named Matt Bean blew the lid on the scam. Now, what happened was somebody had told him that all the psychics were really reading off a pre-written script instead of performing actual tarot card readings when people called in. So somehow he ended up getting a script. And he called the hotline himself to see if they were really reading off the script. And it was true. And that's when he put the story out there to the media. And that's when the FBI launched an investigation into the company. Then lawsuits. Oh, man, lawsuits started rolling in. They started coming. Lawsuits from states like North Carolina, Arkansas, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, Missouri, New York, uh, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and many more. And in 2002, that's when the Federal Trade Commission filed a complaint against the Psychic Readers Network for telling viewers they would get a free reading and then charging them. Now see, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, what their job is, they focus on protecting customers and businesses from fraud. You got a lot of people out here that be doing startup businesses and claiming this would do this and do that. Like doctors be making stuff and saying this can cure cancer, but the FTC, they got to go through them. Now, they also said that the Psycho Readers Network company also bullied and harassed people into paying charges they weren't legally obligated to pay. Now, after the lawsuit, right, the Psychic Readers Network agreed to forgive over $500 million in outstanding charges and pay $5 million in fines to the Federal Trade Commission. But Miss Cleo, she didn't get caught up in that. She almost got caught up in it, but she didn't get caught up. She was dropped from the lawsuit because the company just used her as the face of the company and a spokesperson couldn't be held liable for violations. But the Florida Attorney General did ask to have her birth certificate revealed, proving to the world that she is not a Jamaican shaman. Now, 
After the Psychic Readers Network was shut down by the Federal Probe, Miss Cleo, she had got an offer from another company that included a national tour of inspirational workshops and a two book deal. But her bad reputation and her image was damaged, man. And that whole scandal just messed up that deal. But she did appear in other things, though. Even though her image had a bad reputation and all that, a lot of companies still hire her to be a spokesperson. Like uh, Benefit Cosmetics picked her to be the face of their Flawless Friends Network. She was picked up to be a spokesperson for Fuse Network. She did a commercial for a used car dealership. The company General Mills, who had the cereal uh, Cinnamon French Toast Crunch, put her in a commercial, but the Psychic Readers Network sued them in federal court for violating copyrights and trademarks because they own the whole Miss Cleo brand. And she did find ways to pay her bills, though. She found ways her voice was a character in the Grand Theft Auto Vice City video game. Uh, she played uh, the auntie in that. She had a character on PlayStation's MTV Celebrity Deathmatch. She also appeared in a documentary called Hotline, which was about telephone hotline scams. And she told her side of the story in that. Y'all should check that out. That was a that was a good documentary. She told her side of the story on things and how the, how the company treated her and everything. So... Check that out when y'all get a chance. It's called Hotlines. Now, she also put out a bunch of poetry albums. One was called Convicted for My Beliefs. And another was called Full Moon Madness, in which she said was inspired by the 2007 campus shooting at Virginia Tech. Now, she also came out publicly as a lesbian after her teenage godson inspired her to reveal her sexuality. And believe it or not, she was still doing readings privately, charging clients $75 to $250 to talk by phone or in person. And I mean, she had she still had loyal clients and people still looked at her like a celebrity and thought she was a real psychic, even though even though she predicted Obama would never be the president in which he was. So she was wrong about that. But she did say Tupac and Biggie's murder was a conspiracy. I do believe that. I think she's right about that. And you know what? Miss Cleo, man, she was cool, though. She never took nothing to heart. When all those TV shows started making fun of her, she didn't get mad about it. She said uh, she enjoys all the shows that make fun of her, like Mad TV and Dave Chappelle. But at the end of the day, you know, Miss Cleo insists she has Jamaican roots and claims she's actually not a psychic, but more of a spiritual counselor or spiritual advisor. Now, she also said she didn't make a lot of money like people were thinking. She was more like a, a paid employee for the Psychic Readers Network. She just, she just signed a bad contract, she said. But on July 26th, 2016 Miss Cleo died at a hospice center in Palm Beach County Florida from colon cancer that had spread to her liver and lungs man and she was young man she was only 53 years old rest in peace Miss Cleo